I want to kind of pivot for a second and um, move away a little bit from the, the COVID-19 and into the other uh, thing that's going on in the world right now, which is more around, you know, racial inequality and unrest that's going on out there. And it's causing, it's causing challenges um, for a lot of people and a lot of companies. I was wondering, do you have some thoughts around actionable items that leaders and managers can take? You know, number one, to, to be, to create more of an inclusive corporate or company environment. And then, you know, to add on to that, are, are there some trainings or things that we should be doing to train our managers to make sure that we're being, uh, creating an inclusive environment and that we're also staying compliant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a big question. And there's a lot, there's a lot to that. Um, you know, there are things that the leadership can do of a company to say, now's a good time for us to evaluate our diversity, mm -hmm. right? And not right. diversity program, but true diversity in your business. Mm -hmm. Do you have that or not? Right. If right. you have it, um, and people treat each other respectfully and you have a good positive culture where employees are comfortable voicing their opinions and having a respectful conversation, that kind of thing, and you do have diversity, then uh, do you need a separate diversity program? I don't know. But if you don't have that, then maybe you do need to think about having some kind of diversity program. For small businesses, it's not the same as what you typically read about. You know, if you're watching Twitter or Google or Amazon, what they do is going to be a whole different thing. You know, teams and committees and officers and our clients aren't going to have all that. But what they can do is make an effort to say, okay, let's, let's talk about who we are and how we do things. And the leaders can do, um, you know, state their support right out of the gate, like you did with us. You know, you said, right, hey, right. I, I don't understand all this either, but I'm with you and, and we're stronger together. And you need to look at your harassment and discrimination policies, your equal employment opportunity policy, um, see if those need to be updated. You need to evaluate your diversity program, like I said, make sure people understand that um, it is okay to discuss things that are on their mind, but it's gotta be done in a respectful way. And that in private businesses, free speech is not protected like it is out on the street, you know, when you're protesting or something like that. Businesses right. can limit what people can talk about. So you could have a policy that said, any conversations at work need to be about work-related topics. Now that policy is unrealistic and it's never gonna happen. <laughs> so it's gonna be hard to enforce. So instead you could say something like, you know, we, we encourage you to avoid uh, inflammatory topics such as politics, religion, you know, things that tend to challenge and cause arguments rather than respectful debate. Right. And, um, or you can talk about being disruptive at work. So you could say, look, any actions that are disruptive or offensive to others could be addressed. For example, if I wear a shirt to work that has a slogan that I know is just going to rile people up, right? right? You can say, look, you have every right to feel that way, have that opinion, but you can't wear that shirt to work right. because it's disruptive. Not because we agree or disagree with your opinion, but you're causing a disruption at work. Right. You know, I, to add on to that, I think... The hardest part is you as a business leader can have certain ideals and, and believe that you're running an inclusive, you know, being very inclusive company and diverse company and diversity, you know, how for me, diversity is just makes us all stronger. And mm -hmm. um, I, I value that, but you can only be as strong as the rest of the leaders and managers on your team. Right. So what, what kind of, what kind of training, you know, first of all, I think it comes down to who you hire and who you, who you promote into manager level roles, but what kind of training do you think is important for managers, you know, to be able to make sure that they don't have bias when they're, when they're hiring, when they're recruiting, when they're interviewing and when they're, when they're managing and, and, and doing performance reviews, what kind sure. of training can we help with our managers with? Well, there's, you know, there's unconscious bias training, which taps into uh, some of the things that they may or may not be aware of, right? But you have to go back to how did people grow up? Where, where did they go to school? Where did they go to church? What did their parents tell them? What did they watch on TV? You know, all of these things have an influence on how we frame our view of the world and how we react 
to uh, events that are happening around us. So you got to go kind of go deep on that if you want to. But then you can start to address just specifically how do you communicate when you may feel a reaction internally. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote down a few a few good tips here. So if you're talking to people about how to have a conversation that focuses on respect, just a few tips. One is um, assume a positive or neutral intent from the person you're talking to. So don't assume they're trying to bait you or start a fight, right? Treat communication as a dialogue, not a debate. Don't just wait for them to finish. That's the old Stephen Covey thing, right? You know, <laughs> actually listen to learn, not just for your turn. Right. Uh, be an active listener there. Approach topics you don't fully understand with humility, which starts by acknowledging that maybe I don't know it all. And right. maybe your perspective is different from mine and I'm willing to learn instead of going, but, 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 let me tell you about me. Just be quiet and be willing to listen a little bit and learn a little bit about something else. And that's how you start to understand how people have different experiences and different perspectives. Um, acknowledge the concepts of right or wrong are very subjective. Absolutely. You know, yeah. taste right? All those things are what people think they are. Um, so there is no universal. Um, consider tough conversations, personal growth, you know, which means be open to them. Um, avoid generalizations such as like all, you all, you know, that kind of stuff is bad. Um, and just be respectful, non-inflammatory language. And then there are things you can share with your team as well. Like, like we sent out a list that said, okay, what can we do as just people? right? To, to help with this. Um, and we said there, there's an issue with racial equality out here in America. What can we do as people? Well, we can have conversations with our friends. We can decide personally not to tolerate, mm -hmm. right? Racism right. or things like that. We can vote. We can sign petitions. We can peacefully protest. Businesses may even say, you know what, if you want to participate in a protest, we'll give you a paid day off for that, right? Yeah. They have to think about their social media policies, you know, our business is going to get upset if somebody's real political on their personal social media pages and you got to be careful with that. That's so. a very good point. If you have an employee who, uh, so you're trying as a business leader to create an environment of, in, of uh, you know, an inclusive environment. And then you have an employee who decides to go a little rogue on their social media Mm -hmm. And they're not uh, aligned with your views um, around being an, an inclusive. What can you do about that? Or can you do anything? Yeah, well, as a business, you just have to have a good social media policy that says, you know, you have a right to your own opinion. You cannot represent the company on your personal social media outlet. So you can't, you can't be wearing your company shirt with a logo on it, you know, blasting someone or whatever. So it needs to say that they separate. You even have to have a disclaimer if you're going to say inflammatory things that this is my personal opinion. It does not reflect on my employer, right? And then your policy basically says, look, you can, you can do whatever you want out there, but if what you do violates our harassment policy or is bullying or uh, threatening or any of those things, then we've got to take action on that just as if you were saying those things in the hallway at work. So can I, could we do, can you do that as a leader or manager if you had an employee who you saw post something on social media that was very um, racially uh, biased and negative, almost like you're saying to a point of bullying or, or can we, can I do anything about that? Even though that's yeah. their own personal social media. Yes, you can. I mean, you can, um, you can say to an employee what you're doing does, represents us in such a negative light that it could affect our business. If you are associated with our business, it could affect our business, right? And, and bigger companies do have that real issue with sponsors pulling right. out, right? right? You've seen that on TV and radio and that kind of thing. But you've also seen stories where the, the most recent one was a guy in um, Costco, I think, who wasn't wearing a mask and started yelling at people and all that kind of stuff. And that. a lot of people have seen that video and he got fired from his right. job because they said, you don't represent us. You don't fit with us, you know, and we're an at will employer at will means you can let someone go for any reason. that's not illegal. Right. And I think anybody could make the case that if you're a salesman for our company and you're out there 
you know, generating ill will in the community, that's not going to play out well. Right. Last, last question on, on the bias. Um, I think about hiring, you know, the hiring and recruiting kind of the bias that managers can have. And, and we've all seen it, you know, you look for, sometimes you look for people like yourself or sometimes you look for people totally opposite of yourself. Yeah. You have any, you have any training or ideas of if you're teaching a new manager on how to recruit and interview and hire without that kind of bias, what would you, what would you tell them? How would you train them to, to not think about, you know, you're looking at a resume. How do you, how do you not have that bias that you, you know, that for whatever reason you may have? Yeah, there's, there's a lot, a lot to this question. It's a great question. One is be aware of what your negative and positive biases are, right? I'm a big UGA fan because it's such a great university, so much better than Georgia Tech. And um, so if I'm interviewing somebody... I don't know how you slip through the recruiting process. <laughs> so if I'm interviewing somebody who's a Georgia Bulldog, you know, I may automatically attach to that, right? And, and HR right. folks would call that the halo effect, which is there's one thing about you that I like, so everything about you glows, but right. I don't see it. Um, there's, so there's a lot, a lot to that. So there are things you can do to get around that. One is you use things that help you learn as much as you can about the client. So do you use assessments, right? About, Which the, about the recruit, the, the employee, you said client. Yeah, you're, you're interviewing a candidate, you have them take an assessment or multiple assessments if you want. You may even have them take competency tests re related to the position they're applying for to see if they're competent or not. And those are just extra tools that help you make a decision. You also make a collective hiring decision instead of being the only person who interviews someone, have other people interview. And you can set that up like I used to do it where I would say, um, we're gonna have three people interview this candidate. My job is I am interviewing them for competence. Do you know how to do the job? Tell me how you do the job. I'm gonna test what you know and I'm gonna grill you on it pretty hard. I like everybody because I'm just that kind of person, you know, I'm drawn to people, I'm interested in them, you know, right. so I had other people who didn't like everybody say, you're going to interview this person for their personality to see if they're a fit at work. If they're irritating to you, then that's all I need to know. I didn't even know what or why. If they got on your nerves or were irritating as you were interviewing them, then they're going to get on our nerves when they're working with us too. So that's important to know because part of it is, um, do you want to do the things you're going to do in the job every day? Are you right. capable of doing the things you're going to do in the job every day? And will the people around you want to be around you while you're doing the things you're going to do every day? So all of that has to be evaluated somehow. You can set up a structured interview where you ask the same questions of everybody. That way, um, you know, everybody gets the same set. That's fair. And then you can also train managers when they're interviewing not to make common mistakes. Like one of the biggest mistakes interviewers make is they match stories. Mm. So if, if you said to me, oh yeah, the, I was just fishing last weekend and I go, oh yeah, let me tell you about when I was fishing. Now we just wasted right. the interview bonding over something that has nothing to do with this job. Right. And that's also a way that people get sucked into that halo effect is matching those stories, right? Right. Um, so you just want it to be as objective as possible, have multiple inputs into that decision, whether that's people or tools or all of the above, check backgrounds, check references, you know, have a process that you follow with every candidate so it's not different for each person. And all of that helps you eliminate that unintended bias that may creep in just by having individual biases that people bring to the table. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, it's hard. It's a challenge. But I think, like you're saying, it, the more you can make it as objective as possible by using some of those tools. And then, but you still want to make sure that there's a, a, a fit from a core value perspective. So, because as you build a company around certain core values, you want new people or you want your, your team to also align with those core values. And, and mm -hmm. to me, that's not just about me and the business it's also about the employee the, the potential employee the candidate because you don't want them to be in a position where long term they're not going to be happy in that environment anyway so i think That's there's right. a lot of a lot of ways to um to make it objective and then you know to and then this is the last comment but to piggyback on that 
from a growth perspective, once you get the can, once you get the employees in and the candidates and the team members in, making sure that you're inclusive and you're making objective decisions on who is, you know, rising through the ranks of the business. It can't just be people that you like to hang out with. It also has to be very much, I believe, you know, metrics and ob those objective criteria to me are so important so that, you know, you are making the right decisions as to who is going to grow within the organization as well. Anything on that? Well, I think it comes from the top. Right. So, you know, I, I remember there was an old story in, um, God, when I was in grad school and they, and they talked about a case study where all of these managers had a call every single week. Right. And, um, you know, all it took was the guy who, or the person who was running the meeting, who was the CEO of the company to ask a certain question. And whenever that question was asked, everybody on the call knew, Ooh, that might come up again next week. I better be prepared for that. And all of a sudden it became important to them. So what, what the owner or the leaders of the company ask about sends a pretty strong message, you know, also you've heard me say this before, the things that you ignore and allow to exist, send a message equally as strong as the behaviors that you expect and reinforce. So if you look the other way, people think it's okay. Absolutely. Yeah, totally agree. Well, Scott, thank you so much. I'm sure we're going to be doing some more of these because the piece of uh, the HR outsourcing and the threat engage uh, product um, business that you're representing for us is so important. And I've gotten to see, personally how you have helped so many of our clients. So thank you for today. And um, this information is going to be great for, for our clients and our prospects. So thank you. And uh, we'll talk soon. All right. All right. Bye, Scott. See you later.